In the previous video, we discussed about the cell addition molecules. If you want to watch that video first, the link is in the description. Now, in this video, we'll be discussing about the integrin activation signaling pathway. We know integrins are transmembrane receptor proteins that mediate different signal transduction pathways. Here in this diagram, we can see the structure of integrin molecule. It's having two chains, one alpha and one beta chain. This conformation of integrin molecule, that is the bent conformation, is in low affinity state, means it's the inactive form of integrin molecule. But when we are inside out signal transduction within the cell, through cytoplasmic tail of integrin molecule, the conformation is changed, and we get the open activated form of integrin molecule, as shown in the diagram. And this being the high affinity state of integrin molecule can now mediate several cellular signaling pathways. Now let's get into the signaling pathway directly. Here in this platelet cell membrane, we have the protease activated receptor, aka PAR1 protein. It's a form of GPCR protein, but this receptor gets activated only when ligand cleaves of the N terminal extracellular part of receptor that we are going to see later in this video. Then on the right we have the RAP1 protein having GDP bound. It must be noted here that it is the inactive form of RAP1 protein. Then we also have integrin molecule in the membrane in its inactive state that's bent conformation. Furthermore we also have some molecules like RIAM molecule, inactive talin and kindelin molecule. From here we need to kick start the signaling pathway. First of all, it is the thrombin molecule which acts as a ligand for PAR1. Here in this animation, we can see the thrombin molecule comes in and cleaves off the N-terminal domain of PAR1, which makes the receptor active and transduces the signal inside, which drives off the IP3 DAG pathway. And in the end, we get the calcium release and DAG activation. The combination of calcium molecule and the DAG activates the CalDAG GEF1 protein. The GEF1 is a Gaunian nucleotide exchange factor. So now we have activated GEF1 protein. It comes in and replaces the GDP of RAP1 protein with GTP as shown in the animation. By this way, the RAP1 protein gets active. Now from here, Activated RAP1 protein starts the recruitment of different proteins in this pathway. First of all, RIAM protein is recruited and binds with the RAP1 protein as shown in the animation. Then we have the recruitment of two proteins. First, the recruitment of inactotalin protein and then the recruitment of kindelin protein to the plasma membrane, thus making them active. Both these proteins binds and interacts with the integrin beta chain to trigger the integrin activation. Here in this animation, we can see the talin binds with the beta chain at its cytoplasmic domain, causing the tail reorientation, thus altering the molecular conformation of integrin molecule. And by this way, we get the active open form of integrin molecule. To get into the details, it's actually the talin F3 domain that binds with the beta chain of integrin. The F3 domain engages with the membrane distal part of beta integrin tail and also maintains its membrane distal interaction to change the conformation of integrin molecule. Furthermore, we also have VBS on talin, that's vinculin binding site on talin. When VBS is open for interaction, the vinculin also binds with the talin on one side and on the other side, it binds with the actin filament as shown in the animation. So, vanculin acts as a linkage between talin and the actin filament. So, this is how inside-out signaling works on the activation of integrin molecule on the cell membrane, thus giving us open extended active form of integrin on the cell, which can receive many different ligands to drive the pathways. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.